God is good. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Praise God for uh, for our sister church for the 170th anniversary. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I was going to say that's pretty regimented, date and gender and everything. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. I'm sorry. <laughs> and you probably didn't hear a word about it until she knew all of that stuff. All right. Yes. Well, praise God. Other praises. Yes, sir. A good Bob's report. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Others? I'm sorry? Linda's doing good. Okay. Amen. Praise God. Other praises? Yes, ma'am. I understand that he, well, actually, I know he did because I watched. <laughs> and uh, uh, just make sure you get your facts right. I contact you at 10 o'clock, not 1030 on Saturday night, okay? Just <laughs> tiny things. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And he also did a very good job of the lesson class. Amen. Praise God. Others? I'm going to say, uh, y'all are on the road this morning. Praise God. Well, as we continue into a time of prayer, praying for Daryl Elliott with Advanced Parkinson's, praying for Bree Sebastian, continue to pray for Bob Nolan, praying for Angie Riley as she seeks to get back to normal. Honey, we got a lot of praying to do there. <laughs> Picking on her about that earlier. Praying for Tony Brown for... I'm going to butcher this name, Twyleen Grace, Gross? Twyleen Gross, who had a fall. Oh, that's your mother. Okay. Praying for Mama. Praying for the Hewley family. Praying for the increase of the homeless in our area. Praying for Bree Hasler with gallbladder issues. And praying for our college kids. Other prayer concerns this morning? Yes, ma'am. Continue to pray for James Goodman. Others? <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, Jim, Kennedy, right now. Jim Kennedy at home, yes, and had the pacemaker in, which went successful. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, I'll say your wife, Jeannie, is married, and hopefully she'll get over it soon. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no hope. In it. Seriously, let's pray for Jeannie today. Yes. Others? Remembering mom and dad. I just went blank. Phil and Karen, thank you. A memory is a wonderful thing to have. Uh, from what I understand, it's the second thing to go, but I can't remember what the first is for the life of me. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Rylan's grandma. She's got really bad allergies. I'm sorry, who? Rylan's grandmother. Okay. Others? Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father, Lord, we just stop as we just lift up our hearts to you, Father, praising you for this day that you have blessed us with indeed. You are so good to us, Father, for our better than we deserve, and we just come bringing you the honor and the glory to your most holy and majestic name. 
Thank you, Father Lord, for the way you bless us day in and day out. As we hear these words of thanks all over the house this morning, we are just excited <coughs> for how you just continue to pour out your blessings upon us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do and be in our lives. Lord, as we are your church, we pray for... Uh, our life together as we seek to be the people you have called us to be for such a time as this. May we truly put you first in all that we say and do. May we walk in wisdom toward those outside our lives that they may see our good works and glorify our Father who is indeed in heaven. Lord, as we come today, we have many concerns upon our hearts as we pray for Daryl, for Bree, for Bob, for Angie as we pray for Tony, for Twilene, for the Huey family, as we pray for the increase in homelessness, as we pray for Bree, for our college uh, students, as we pray for James, for Jim, for Jeannie, for Phil and Karen, for Ryland's grandmother. We just lift all of these up to you, Father Lord, praying for your healing touch and grace upon each and every life, as only you, the great physician, can bring. And we pray, Lord, that you will show us, Lord, how we can be your conduits of grace and healing, how we can deliver your love to these and to so many more. Father, as we are in this time of worship, we pray that all that we say, all that we do this morning, Lord, that we will point others only to you. We thank you, Father, as we gather in this time in which we return your tithe and bring our offerings to you, Father. May they be a true sign and symbol of our love for you. And thank you as you return these gifts to us, Lord, as your church, that they are used and blessed throughout our, our congregation, our community, and our world to glorify and praise your holy name. We pray all these things in your Son's name, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. It's good for us to go on vacation, but it's good for us to be back. Please stand with us this morning as we sing together. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, but we need thy tender care. In thy present pastures, feed us. Thy foes prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. We are thou to thy befriend us. The guardian of our way, keep thy flock from sin, defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Early let us seek thy favor, early let us do thy will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with thy love our being still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast Loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, love us still. O oh God, you are my God, and I will ever pray. 
praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your way. And step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step you lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. I come to the garden alone. thank you for this morning that we can praise your glorious name. God, that you've given us so many continuous blessings. Blessings we didn't deserve. Blessings we didn't even ask for. But God, that you've blessed us nonetheless. God, that you just are working in ways that we can't even see. But God, help us to be receptive to what you're doing and help us to be the church that goes out and is doing what you need done in this community. Help us to share that love. Help us to share your grace. God, we just thank you for giving us the time to do your work today. God, we just pray that you will open our hearts and our minds and our ears 
to the word that's gonna be given and help us to do something. Help us to do what you've called each of us to do. But God, we just most of all thank you for Jesus. It's his sacrifice that has given that, that's gonna give us that opportunity to be with you someday. We thank you and praise you. And in Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Let us turn our Bibles this morning to Colossians in chapter 5. It was Colossians in chapter 4. I don't think there's five chapters in Colossians. Okay, yeah. Colossians in chapter 4. And as we've been doing for the last um, several weeks now, as we're uh, reading through Paul's letter to the church in Colossae, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. And if you don't have that, if you look in your bulletins this morning, you will find uh, an insert with that scripture um, there. <clears throat> Colossians in chapter 4, beginning with the fifth verse. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. May the Lord... Add his blessings to the reading of his word. Amen. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to give you an English lesson this morning. No, no, don't do that. Stick with me. It won't be that bad. <clears throat> you remember way, way, way back in English, there was this, um, what was called an idiom. Anybody remember that one? It was like, yeah, a couple. Okay. It was like, hmm. So some idiots maybe, but not idioms. But anyways, uh, an idiom, according to the dictionary, is a group of words established by usage as having a meaning not deducible from those of the individual words. And if that helped clarify things for you, I am really impressed because it didn't do a thing for me. Anyways, an idiom is um, a, a, a word or a phrase that's used in a language that makes no sense anywhere else. For instance, we talk about it raining cats and dogs outside. Are there li literally cats and dogs coming out of the sky? No, but we know what that means. It's, it's a belly washer. There's a whole lot coming down, right? Or we say that our refrigerator is running. Now, I won't ask anybody to admit to this, but did anybody ever make prank phone calls back when they were a kid? And Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even have to ask. Those hands went up. And called a store and says, yes, your, are, are, do your refrigerators run? Yes, well, why don't you go catch them then? But that, 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 that's an idiom. It, it doesn't make sense outside of that language. Uh, it's just in the culture, it's just something that you understand. In French class, way back in high school, I learned that in France that machines do not run, that machines walk. And you're like, what? Well, come on. It doesn't make sense to say that machines run either, so both of them are crazy, right? Instead of saying my refrigerator is running, it's my refrigerator is walking. Now, our French teacher was telling us about this in class one day, and she had taken a group of students to Paris, and uh, uh, everybody was responsible to get on the subway for themselves, and one of the students was having a very difficult time trying to get past the turnstile to get to the subway there in Paris. And she couldn't make her ticket work in the machine for anything that she tried. It just would not operate. And she couldn't remember what the French word for work was. So she thought, I don't know, maybe this is kind of like machines walking instead of running. So she went to the ticket person and says, I I'm sorry, and in French, says, sorry, sir, I cannot make my ticket walk. He goes, oh, it's no problem. See, da, 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 da. It walks just fine. Fortunately, he spoke English and he understood what she was trying to say. But as you can imagine, she was very red-faced in the process. 
When we read this morning, the very first word is an idiom from the Greek. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Walk is an idiom from the Greek for how we live. In the New Testament especially, but throughout the Bible, uh, our life and our walk with the Lord is how it's usually being referred to. Are we literally walking with Jesus Christ? No, but we understand what that means. This is our relationship. This is our daily, I got to say it, walk with Jesus. And we see this throughout the scriptures. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man. Blameless in his generation, Noah walked with God. Stay there. I guess it's kind of like machines walking and running, and here I am talking about the jacket. Oh, well. Psalm 86 and verse 11. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Micah 6, 8. He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Galatians 5 and 16, but I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. And in 3 John verse 4, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Are we literally walking? It's how we live our life. That's what that phrase, that idiom in this context means. And it's a perfect one. I've talked before about my walking, and I'm constantly drawing parallels between walking uh, out in the woods and enjoying that time with the Lord and how it comes back to our daily walk and life with Jesus Christ. What does it mean to walk in wisdom toward outsiders? Two things to think about in particular this morning. First, we are to walk in wisdom toward outsiders by being careful how we interact with non-Christians. That's who the outsiders are that we're talking about, those who are not in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> how are we to walk wisely toward outsiders? Three ways I want us to think about today. First, don't let them distract us and our walk with Jesus Christ. The, the world doesn't care anything about the things of Jesus, and they want us to pull us along with them. We are not to let them take us down. We are to keep our eyes on Jesus in the process. We are reminded of this many places in Scripture. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, we are told, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Colossians 2, uh, this very book, just two chapters earlier in verse 8, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. As Christians, we are called to keep our eyes on Jesus first and foremost. We are to walk with Jesus and not be taken aside on the path by the world, which is so easily done. Pastor D.L. Moody is quoted for uh, saying, If I walk with the world, I can't walk with God. Let's make sure who we are walking with, brothers and sisters. It's all about Jesus. Second, how are we to walk in wisdom toward outsiders? We're not to let them distract us in our walk with the Lord. Instead, we are called to influence them to walk with the Lord. What a privilege we have to share our love of Jesus Christ to share about our daily walk with Jesus Christ, to share what is our reason for getting up in the morning. It's all about Jesus. And may we be 
faithful and influencing others rather than allow them to influence us away from Christ, that we will influence them to Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 5 and verses 14 to 16 is that famous scripture, you are the light of the world. Have you ever really thought about that for just a moment? Let that one sink in. You and I are lights to a lost world that so desperately needs Jesus Christ. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand and it gives lights to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. It's all about Jesus Christ. We are to point others only to him. When they see us, may they not be seeing us in reality, but may they see Jesus Christ living out in our lives. Before I forget to say this, I was reminded right before I got up here, and I was afraid I was going to forget. Um, Mickey wants uh, a meeting with all the combat men immediately after worship because this is y'all's opportunity to shine some light into the world. Amen? Okay. Perfect segue. Anyways. Uh, I, when I've never carried a wallet over the years. I, I, I just don't enjoy that sitting right there instead. And I don't have it in my pocket because I emptied my pockets before I come up here, or most of it. And I just got my, my IDs and stuff in a rubber band. I just stick them in my pocket. But when I was younger, uh, I would get wallets from time to time. And one wallet that, has all, uh, that always stuck with me that I appreciate, appreciate, especially appreciated and enjoyed was one that my father gave me when I was a young kid. And no, it's not around anymore. Wore out, it's gone. And on the back of that wallet was that scripture, let your light so shine before all men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven, Matthew 5 and 16. We need to be reminded daily that we are walking with Jesus Christ and our goal is that others will see Jesus in us. Leonard Ravenhill said, smart men walked on the moon. Daring men walked on the ocean floor. But wise men walk with God. May we be wise indeed. Amen? Third, walk in wisdom by remembering that sharing the gospel is part of everyone's walk with the Lord. Our pastor back home in Tennessee, he would talk about how uh, a lot of church folks, they, they, they expect a super hired holy man, i.e. the pastor, to do everything. Things like witnessing to other people. But in reality, we're all called to do that. It's not just the super hired holy men. It's all who are brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. It's appropriate in the scripture here. Uh, I... Uh, Two weeks ago, as, as you might suspect, this was the sermon for last week. And yes, it's, it's, it even got changed a little bit from over this past week. But my original thought that I was going to look at verses uh, 2 through 6 because they're a unit. And the more I looked at it, I said they, they need, that we, we need a little more detail in there. But one of the things that you will see is when you look back at the previous scriptures, verses 3 for 4... Paul was talking about uh, the church in Colossae praying for himself and for the work of the ministry. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. And then it brings these words up, walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of of the time. Paul is saying, I don't want to let y'all off. This is not just for uh, um, uh, sharing the gospel. is not just for apostles and ministers and pastors. It is for all in the family of God. We are all called to be uh, the light of the world wherever the Lord has planted us. And Paul continues this thought. 
We hear this throughout Scripture, but let me especially focus on 2 Corinthians 5 today in verses 16 through 20. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Don't we love to read that scripture? The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Praise God. When I look at my life, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of a lot of things that are in the past, and they ain't part of my life no more. Amen? You hear me? You know what I'm talking about? I want that to be part of the past. I don't want it to be in the here and now. In Jesus Christ, I am a new creation. Christ has taken residence in my life, and he makes all the difference indeed. Verse 18, all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, a lot of people read this us, and they think, okay, well, Paul is talking about himself and uh, the others who are part of his missionary trip. No, he's talking about all Christians. All Christians have the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. What does it mean to reconcile? We don't use that term a whole lot anymore, but you know, back in the days we talk about reconciling our bank statements. Uh, when you would get your statements in the mail, you know, when that, all of that stuff still came in the mail, and you would get that and you pull your checkbook out, which, you know, nobody seems to have a checkbook anymore. It's all on the computer. But anyways, you would take your checkbook, you would take your, uh, 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 your, your bank statement that came in the mail, and you would make sure that they were on the same page, that everything checked out. You reconcile them to make sure that you and the bank agreed on how much money you had that in account. And if you were like me, there was <clears throat> some times that we didn't agree, and they were always right, unfortunately. Anyways, <clears throat> another story. But we are called to the ministry of reconciliation. We live in a world that's lost and dying and going to hell without Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ calls us to be agents of reconciliation, to, to pull people to God that the world, the lost world, will be reconciled with him. Wow. Doesn't God know a better way to do it than to rely on me, to rely on you? But that's his plan. We are his agents of reconciliation. Therefore, verse 20, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled. To God. Brothers and sisters, we are agents of reconciliation. Let us step up and be excited about our God called ministry and let us take it by both horns and move forward. And when we get to verse 6, we get to the how to question. Pastor, that's nice, but how in the world do we do this? Verse 6. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Several things in there. First of all, is it, um, I, I need to go back, if you allow me, to verse 5, where it talks about making the best use of the time. Time here in the Greek, there's two different words. Uh, for time in Greek, and this is the word chronos, which is oddly enough where we get our word chronology, and it's not talking about chronology. Uh, chronos is talking about the season or the perfection of time when everything is correct. This is how it ought to be done uh, when Jesus came at just the right time. That's chronos. The right season in life, it was a God thing. It's not because dot, 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 month, 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 week, 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 week came. It was the right time, the perfect season. Ephesians 5 and verses 15 and 16, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are 
evil. We are to use the same God-given time that everyone has been given and use it for Jesus Christ. How many times have we said, oh, I wish I had another hour in my day to get all this stuff accomplished? No, you do not. You know what would happen if you had another hour a day? You'd have another six hours of work to put into it. You don't want that. But God has given us each 24 hours, and we are called and accountable for the time that he has given us. May we use it to his perfection. How do we do this? Verse 6, we must be aware of how we interact with the world, especially how we talk. And it uses that wonderful image of letting our speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt. How many of you like a salt shaker sitting on your table? How many of you like to put salt on your food? Come on, I suspect it's every hand in the house. Okay, I, I see Mickey just like two hands up there. Salt makes food taste better, right? Well, seasoned with salt. Obviously, we're not putting salt onto our tongues as we talk. It's another idiom again, is it not? But we are talking about how we are to interact with others in our lives and those that we come across and be careful that how we speak to them will be in such a way that they will want to listen about Jesus Christ. I mean, you know this. It's real easy to get up in somebody's face and tell them everything they're doing wrong, isn't it? I mean, can't you just see Sergeant Carter right there in Gover Powell's face as he's just screaming and yelling at him? And most of us do not like that, do we? Well, guess what? Nobody else does either. Instead... We are called to season our conversation with salt in such a way. I'm sorry, I started laughing. As soon as I said uh, Sergeant Carter, I had flashback to, to basic training. And I'll never forget that first night we were there. And we had the joy of meeting our military training instructor for the very first time. It was like 1 o'clock in the morning. They do that on purpose, by the way. Um, it was not because our plane was late. It was right on time. And they got us out there at 1 o'clock in the morning, the first time we were to meet them. And this sergeant was walking up and down the, uh, 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 the rows and the columns. And in his hat, the brim of his uh, hat, his uh, TI hat, was right about here on me. He was very short. And, and I'm standing there just, you know, I, we're being screamed and yelled at. I think we learned a few new cuss words that night. And I was like, who was the fool who held a gun to his head and made me enlist? Oh, that was me. <laughs> and, and I'm just standing there not saying a word. I was like, oh, Lord, let them ignore me. Let them ignore me. And sure enough, this T.I. came right in front of me as I'm saying that. And he just looks up at me. I thought his hat was going to fall off backwards. He looks up at me, and he's just starting to say something. But instead... He moves to the next guy. Yes, thank you, Lord. <laughs> and he moves over to him. And this guy was just, well, I was, uh, the T.I. is here. I'm here. And this next guy is like about here. And he comes up to him, and he, was, uh, uh, he uh, has in his hand this orange University of Tennessee volunteers bag that he is using for luggage. luggage. And he comes over to him. Boy, where are you from? Tennessee, sir. Well, I can tell that. I was like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> None of us wants to be treated that way, do we? The Lord calls us to season our conversation with salt. You've heard the adage before. You might be the only Bible that some people will ever read. And if we're up in their face screaming and yelling about their sins, they're not going to pay us any attention. We need to season our conversations with salt. So I want to say it today. Are you ready? Be a salty Christian. That's what God is calling us to be. Second, how do we do this? By asking ourselves, is our talk pleasing to the Lord? 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 to 16. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. 
Always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. I've said this before. We ought to stand out like sore thumbs. People ought to look at us and say, why are you so happy? Everybody else here is miserable. I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you the reason for the hope that I have in my life. My reason is Jesus Christ. Yet, do it with, you ready? Gentleness and respect. Having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. That means how we interact with people when we're out there in the world matters. And we need to be paying attention how we interact. Back, y'all have heard lots of stories of when I was in college working at Popeye's. And one of the things that I hated to do was work on Sunday. I didn't have to do it very often, but every once in a while they'd be shorthanded. They would just put me on the schedule and not even ask. And um, uh, there was one Sunday I was having to work instead of being at church. And it was the dinner rush because all the church members were there right after the services. Think about that, folks. The next time uh, you're out at, at dinner on Sunday, are you keeping somebody from being in church because they're at work? Anyways, and, and here I was, and I was, uh, was working between the register and the back, putting orders together. And this one individual, him and his family came up, and they obviously had been to church because he was wearing a suit and what have you. And he was about the most obnoxious customer that you had ever heard and seen in your life. And I was like, oh, Lord, please let this guy get out of here. Fortunately, I didn't have to deal with him. But the girl who was at the cash register, as soon as him and his family left, said he was the rudest person ever that I've ever had come across through here. And I was like, yeah, he was. And the only problem was is I knew who it was. He was the pastor of one of the Baptist churches in town. And I wasn't going to share that right then. How we live our lives matters. How we interact with people. How is our walk with Jesus Christ? Is our walk one in which we are able to walk in wisdom toward outsiders? Because we are salty Christians. We are sharing the love of Jesus Christ. I pray that if you are here today and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you will say yes to him. During this time of invitation, that you will come and give your heart and life to him. But brothers and sisters, I'm also speaking to all of us today. Are we salty Christians? Or is our salt useless just to be thrown out and trampled by the world? Remember how we interact with folks in the world matters because how we interact will speak to how they are willing to consider and listen and hear about the love of Jesus Christ. Um, you've heard the adage, you, uh, you, you can't take it with you. Well, that's incorrect. There's one thing that we can all take with us to heaven. And you know what that is? More people. Let's take more and more and more people to Jesus Christ. As our musicians come, let us stand and let us sing about a walk with Jesus Christ. However our Lord leads you today, say yes and come to him even now.
Lord, while we trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil is If we trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of His love into all on the altar we lay for the favor he shows and the joy he bestows and for those who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy but to trust and obey. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Well, I hope that you were able to hear some of that this morning, because by the time I got done, it was getting difficult. Um, and uh, if you were wondering, no, I was doing a Millie Vanelli there at the end. I couldn't sing no more. I just had to mouth it. <laughs> but I love that song. I need to be reminded day in and day out to trust and obey Jesus Christ. Are you there with me? Ah, oh, I need that daily reminder. It's easy to get distracted by the world. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. Thank you. Don't forget, combat immediately after worship. And everyone, please stay and help us with the trash pickup out on Highway 356 today. Oh, and pick up after yourself here in the sanctuary this morning because uh, Michelle's not here this week, and it'll help me from that much less to pick up later, and I'd appreciate it. Yeah, Thank you. Huh? I said, ain't got to be doing it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. God bless and thank you for being with us this morning.